I haven't done a cooking competition since MasterChef. Hurry up, Nick. Hazel, yeah, come on. Are you kidding me? Come on. But today, I'm feeling competitive. Manny, get over here. Huh? For those of you that don't know, Manny is my trusty cameraman. Manny drove separately and got in a small car accident. Manny, don't miss it. Manny, what's blanching? Uh, you're fired. Manny, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. Thought we could park here. You're fired. I'm not kidding this time. Why his hair cut like this? It like the hair on side of his head run away and meeting on his chin. Today, Manny will be cooking against me. What? Manny, grab that cutting board under the table because you're going to need it. I had Marvel make two completely random mystery boxes and neither of us has any idea what's inside. What the f***? I'm gonna let Manny take his pick because I've had plenty of mystery box challenges in the past from Gordon Ramsay himself. It is a little hard to concentrate cooking in front of Alessandra. It's hard to focus on a radish when there's a supermodel standing there. So I'm not feeling too nervous right now. All right, I'm gonna go with this one. Can I open it? Not yet. For the record, we've had tens of thousands of requests for Manny to be in one of the videos, particularly cooking with me after he's learned and watched so much. And before we open the boxes, one last thing. For those of you that don't know, we're trying to catch up to Gore Ramsey and subscriber count right now. And we have a long road ahead. So go smack that like button and make sure you don't forget to subscribe either. Don't forget to subscribe. You're fired. <laughs> All right, here we go. I really have no idea what the f is in here. Okay, let's see. <laughs> oh. All right, we got it. We got a potato. We got another one, actually. There's two of them. We got some garlic Osmo and some actual real garlic right here. It's a nice pair. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. We got a bottle of red wine right here. And then Manny's favorite, we got a big, nice piece of... This is, uh, I don't know what this is called. I should know this. Wait, maybe there's a hint on here. Manny, that's a Chateaubriand. We've cooked one of these, like, 50 times. Uh Apparently this is called a Chateaubriand. I should have known that. All right, there's one more thing in here. I don't really know what this is. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have to wear this while I cook today. You're doing it the wrong way, man. Yeah. Are you I am? serious? I look ripped in this. All right, I'm actually really excited here because I miss mystery box challenges. What the heck? My first ingredient is cooked salted duck eggs. Where the f do we even find these? Second, I have a nice block of cream cheese. It looks kind of beat up. More duck eggs. There's so many duck eggs. Many. We've never even had duck eggs in the kitchen here. And then just this big thing of flour. I got kind of a boring box. Check under the table. Is this part of my box? <laughs> what is this? It's really cold. <laughs> I still see nothing. What the hell is this? It's King Crab. Where did we even get a King Crab right now? He's moving. I'm so glad I didn't pick this box. I have no idea how to cook that thing. <laughs> That's all you. Holy shit. This is like a full-on lively, lively king crab. Clearly the main ingredient in my box is this king crab. Manny, we're in for a challenge. We are. So there you have it. Today we'll have an intense showdown between me and Manny with surf versus turf. To begin, I had to square up against Manny and things got a little bit heated. Hey, hey, guys, 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 guys. Let's get our 60 minute timer started and our time starts now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. Uh, I'm not gonna cook this entire thing. That wouldn't make sense, obviously. It's just cut into the meat like immediately. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna turn it over now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cut a nice piece out of this. Nice little piece of flame and yon. I'm gonna use this red wine in here and make a red wine reduction with a little bit of garlic. Then I'm gonna take these potatoes and make a little potato puree and, and put that under the steak. And then finish it, obviously, with some Osmo garlic salt. That's the plan. I hope it works out. Today I'll be making king crab raviolos with a beautiful fresh king crab leg right next to it. I've never used a duck egg before for a pasta, but we're gonna find out how it is. I always feel so bad killing the king crabs, but I'm sorry, Mr. Krabs. I'm just kind of prepping the meat here before I cut into it. There's a lot of silver skin. You can see it like right here. And I'm just gonna trim this as much as I can. It's so mangled. It looks like you killed someone. Manny, it seems kind of unfair that I have a king crab and Manny just has to sear off one piece of beef. I'm gonna cut in. I'm gonna get my filet out of this pretty soon. I just want to make sure that it's as good as I can get it. Picked a really good section of it. There's not too much fat. You took off all the silver skin. He gashed the whole center of it. Ruined the filet immediately. Whoa, whoa, Manny. <laughs> so at this point, I'm gonna be taking off all of my crab's legs. There's gonna be water and juice everywhere. At a full eight pounds, hence why this costs $800, this crab is way too big to fit into a pot. All right, Manny, I've already broken down my king crab. I'm moving kind of quick, Manny. We only have 45 minutes left, so you might want to be quick. I've got my boiling water. Time to cook that king crab. I'm gonna steam these legs. Beautiful. All right, so I'm thinking about actually just cutting this piece off. I'm not gonna have as big of a piece, but I think it's gonna be a more perfect piece. This might be frowned upon in the Wagyu community or Nick, but I, oh I'm just... God. All right, now I'm gonna cut through. I think my perfect piece is gonna be right here. There we go. Now this is gonna be our nice filet mignon. Steak. No, it's not. Please tell me you're joking. Please tell me you're joking. And you're messing with me or no? No, I'm not. That's this is the steak that you just cut out of this? Yeah. Do you know how tall a filet mignon is? This is probably one ounce. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you need a big tall piece. What are you doing? Sorry, chef. I should have let him use that. It's ridiculous. 
My crab is going in. I need to start working on my pasta or I am not going to make the cut. We're less than 40 minutes left here, so I really have to move quick. This is gonna take a while to cook as well, so I'm feeling kind of stressed right now. Okay. All right, we're going for a second try here. This wasn't good enough, so I'm gonna go for this entire chunk right here. I kind of cleaned it off. I think it's good enough, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in. This is our new piece. Pretty substantially bigger than the first one. And now I'm gonna move on to the, the red wine sauce. Now I'm gonna come back and cook this later. So I don't wanna hurt Manny's feelings, but look what he's doing here. He has first made one that's way too short. Now he's made one that's far too tall. I'd cut off probably about this amount off of there and have a really, really nice steak, but I'm gonna let him do his thing. This is his dish. So the king crab has this crazy amount of liquid, but I have to start getting working on my pasta. I'm gonna run out of time. All right, so I'm gonna get started on the red wine reduction sauce. I found some extra stuff in the fridge. I found some shallots, some butter, and some rosemary. I'm gonna start by cutting up some shallots kind of finely. Manny, this is the last tip that I think I'm gonna give you today. You need to deglaze your pan with the red wine. That's all I'm gonna say. And I think when I deglaze, I'm gonna do that after um, I, I, I toss these in some butter. Thanks, Manny. I am getting to work on my pasta. To keep things fair, I'm not gonna measure out anything. I mean, I typically don't anyways, but I wanna level the playing field here a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with some flour. I'm gonna dump this onto the center of my cutting board, make my nice little well in the middle. And then into that well, I'll crack a few of my nice duck eggs. I've got a couple cuts from the king crab, but I made it out alive. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit. This on like a low, medium heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of this oil in. What in the f are you doing? I'm just gonna get a knob of this butter off. Probably like this much. Don't need a ton. I'm gonna let this melt in the pan a little bit before I toss my shallots in. And I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. I don't wanna brown the butter, but actually it might be kinda nice. Now I'm gonna add the shallots in. And you clearly have not paid any attention to all the many times that we've made steak. He could not be doing things more backwards. My pasta is coming together. I think the duck yolk pasta dough might actually work out. I really do. <laughs> All right, my pasta dough is finished. I'm gonna go ahead and rest this in the fridge about 15 minutes. And in the meantime, my king crab is complete. I don't wanna overcook it because I'm gonna continue cooking it when I make the pasta and we want it to be perfect. I'm gonna add the red wine to the glaze and then I'm gonna let it reduce into like a nice thick red wine sauce that I'm gonna use later. What are you doing? So we haven't been able to find a, a wine opener, so forcing me to try other methods to try to get this open. I might honestly just have to push the cork in. All right, this seems to be working. It's not the ideal method, but we're gonna go with it. I want everyone to take a quick look at the stations here. I have my neatly wrapped pasta dough, my king crab is cooked, then look what's <laughs> happening over here. So, so I haven't even really started my sauce yet because I've been trying to find a wine opener for like 20 minutes. So and we only have about 25, 30 minutes yeah. left. I'm gonna keep this up, I'm gonna kind of get this at temperature again, and then I'm gonna flambe the sauce with the red wine. Flambe, <laughs> give me some. Let's go. So it's kind of bubbling, cooked a little bit more than I would like to, but we're just gonna kind of go with it. It's not hot enough, I don't think, for flambe yet. Bombay's almost done, so a little bit of a flame on the way till this kind of burns off. I think that was my first successful Bombay. All right, now I'm just gonna let this reduce. All right, so I'm gonna chop a few chives up. This was actually something that I learned in my first restaurant job. You have to be nice and quick with them. And these don't have to be too fine, so I'm kind of whipping right through it here just because I'm gonna put these into the overall mix of the king crab. I'm almost going for a crab rangoon type raviolo. So into my bowl of cream cheese, and then I'm gonna have that nice duck egg in the middle, just the yolk, and it's gonna pop open and spill across the plate as a sauce as you cut into the raviola. All right, Nick's kind of been roasting me about how messy my cooking station is, so I'm gonna take the pieces of meat that I'm not using and toss them behind me and clean this up a little bit, and then I'm gonna get started with the potatoes. So I am beginning to cut into my beautiful king crab leg. The key here with king crab is trying to really carefully open it up and keep it nice and clean. It's a really kind of delicate art. Many should feel lucky that he didn't get the king crab because to break open and cook a king crab with fresh pasta, and all that kind of stuff within an hour is no easy feat. So as you can see, that came out nice and clean. And I actually want to lay a full king crab leg on my final dish right next to the Eggo raviola. All right, now that I've kind of cleaned off my cooking station here, I'm going to take both of my potatoes raw with the skins on and toss them in the boiling water behind me. Here we go, there's one potato. There's two. All right, I've cooked potatoes before, but I honestly, I don't remember how long I'm supposed to cook them. So don't tell them, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google it. So I'll chop this up nice and fine, just into small little pieces where you can still get that nice texture from the crab, but where it's not gonna kind of overpower the raviolo and be too much. I'll toss that into my bowl here. Perfect. It's okay if I bring a little crab juice with me. That's what I want here. All right, so I've had this on a very, very low simmer because I don't want to burn this. The sauce is really starting to thicken. It's a lot thicker than when we started. I'm gonna keep on going so it's a little bit thicker, and then I'm gonna purify it with this shin one right here. Put this in here. Now I'm gonna use a spatula and just kind of press it through here. 
I have to say, it makes me proud to cook with Manny. After all the things that I've tried to teach him, I hope he's at least soaked a few things up, but so far, honestly, I, I don't, I don't. I mean, this, this reduction smells and looks okay, but if you move it around, you can see it's not properly emulsified. It would be what we call a broken sauce. I guess it's broken. <laughs> Still a sauce. So we currently have 23 minutes left on the clock. I'm gonna add just a few seasonings into this, but I wanna keep it nice and simple. All these flavors should speak for themselves. I wanna let the king crab do the talking. Now I'm gonna start prepping the steak here. I'm gonna keep the seasoning simple. I'm gonna use some freshly ground black pepper, some flaky white, some roasted garlic Osmo salt as well. Then I'm gonna take some of this garlic. I'm gonna put on the, on the steak. Seasoning properly, I like that. So I'm gonna roll this up and pick up the rest of the salt on the board. And then I'm gonna go in with some pepper. You need about five times more seasoning on the piece of meat there. All right, so my pasta dough is done. I'm gonna go ahead and begin rolling it out. But here's the thing, I wanna keep this competition fair, so I'm gonna be using a rolling pin to hand roll all my pasta as well. No machines today. I just checked the timer, we only have 18 minutes left. I'm gonna try to get these potatoes done in time and then move on to cooking my steak. Looks like we have some moldy garlic, definitely not gonna use that. But we'll use some of this, nothing's in my favorite today really. It's kind of unfair to be honest. Please follow me back to take a look at Manny steaming his potatoes. No lid, the water's only about halfway out. <laughs> no idea what's going on in here. The potatoes are probably more confused than Manny. Alright, I've gone a lid. <laughs> I'm gonna add it to the pot. Nick told me that's gonna help a lot, so. All right, if you kind of see this, it's separated. Since we waited so long too, I also burned the shallots. Everything about the sauce is pretty fun. So I'm gonna redo this. Hopefully the second time is better than this. It's not that hard to beat. It is extremely hard to roll out fresh pasta. It has to be nice and clear and thin through the center, and I'm doing this all by hand. So I'm gonna take my ring mold and cut out a nice ring of my pasta dough. We need two of these to make the perfect raviolo. So for my raviolo, I'm gonna go on with a nice big scoop of that delicious filling that I made. Put that right in the middle. Then using a duck egg, I'll make a nice little well in the center, and then I'll go right in with my duck egg to the center, paint all the edges of my raviolo, just so that I can seal it all up, and then on goes my lid. Manny, you only have 15 minutes. The potatoes should be done in theory. I hope they're not f***ed up. There you go, here's one potato. Poke it, looks good. I think it's okay. There's my timer. I put it in for 25 minutes, but it also wasn't steaming correctly for like a good like 18 minutes of that, so I don't know if it's gonna be okay. All right, now we're gonna see if this actually cooked all the way through. After 25 minutes, this is not good. I'm gonna get another potato. All right, so this has been like, I don't know, in here for another two minutes longer than the other one, so maybe we'll have a little bit better luck. Oh, Oh, this thing's a little bit softer. We'll take off the parts of the potato that are cooked here because I don't have a lot of time left and we'll leave the inner part of the potato that's not cooked inside of this. You guys got 13 minutes left. How you feeling with only 13 minutes left, man? I'm making extra ones. I, I'm literally having so much fun over here. This to me is one of the most exciting videos we've ever done. F this shit. All right, I just added some butter in here. It should melt because it's still really hot. All right, a new stick of butter. Try number two. Hopefully I don't f it up this time. Put a little bit of oil in so the butter doesn't burn. Shallots in here. I'm not gonna flambe it this time, just don't have time for that. I'm gonna try to get the sauce right. Okay, now I'm gonna add the red wine in. Here we go. Feel this way. I'm just hoping I can get it to emulsify correctly. It's finally time to start cooking my raviolos. I'm gonna go in with some of that crabby water. I'm not losing any of this flavor with my dish. That is what the pasta is gonna cook in. I'm gonna pour this sauce in this bowl. Try not to spill, because I've been spilling all day long. All right, before I cook the steak, I'm gonna get a couple things that I'm gonna use to base the steak. I have some raw garlic here, rosemary, got my steak all seasoned. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some oil. I'm gonna add like, I don't know, like half an inch of oil in here and wait till it's really hot, what Nick's taught me. No, not half an inch, more like two centimeters. We only have six minutes left. He has not even started his steak. I can tell you right now, I'm going to have to give him any extra time. All right, I think the oil is hot enough. I really want this to be really hot to get a nice sear on both sides. So wish me luck, here we go. Really proud of you, man. That was good. Now let's see if you paid attention. So I'm just gonna let this sit for like two minutes on each side and let it cook all the way through. I'm just honestly worried about either cooking it too much or not cooking it enough. As you can see, that's a really nice crust. You can see one of the steps he missed, he didn't push the steak down so it's not fully crisp and brown. Everything bubbled up here and it essentially steamed this section of the beef. He didn't pay attention. Maybe I can get that right <laughs> on this side. So I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start pushing it down now. For the record, what you're looking at there is probably a 50 to $75 filet mignon. So if Manny messes that up, that's just throwing money right out the window. All right, let's check out this other side. I think we can safely say that this side is way better than our first attempt here. It's fantastic. I'm gonna flip it over and try to improve this side a little bit. Happy Are you doing anything? I'm still waiting. We are past the time of the hour block. We have three judges that are coming. I don't want to finish my dish and have my egg yolk raviolo not work, so I have to wait. I would have been done 15, 20 minutes ago. Look at this. He started cooking his steak, the main element in his dish, after the time ran out. Manny, what is this? What is this? I'm not using it. We 
wasting the most expensive half. As you remember, like the first time we did this, the other side was bad. I think this is a, a, a much better improvement. Look at that. That's a crispy steak. So that is now what a lot of people would call burnt. All I know is this. If the judges cut Manny's steak open and it's not a perfect doneness level, that's it for Manny. What are you doing? You're gonna too, melt too, too much, too much. The trash can is smoking, man. <laughs> Now I'm gonna baste the steak. I'm gonna add some butter in, some garlic, add some thyme. Smell that, it smells really good. All right, now I'm just gonna continue to baste this. All right, to finish off my dish, I'm gonna go in with my egg yolk raviolos, which have to be cooked perfectly for this to work. These are some of the hardest things to make in cooking. I'll put my plate right in the center and I'm gonna keep this simple. In the back, I have some brown butter going. This is perfect brown butter, which is gonna help to finish off my raviolo. If these are not cooked perfectly, my dish will have no sauce and be a complete failure. And I can't lose to Manny today. Once my brown butter is hot, I'm gonna take that raviolo, place it right into that brown butter and let it fizz. Give that thing a whole bath of brown butter. And after this, we sit it down for a second to rest. Manny, the judges are waiting outside. We have to finish our dishes right now. We have to clean off our workstations because they have no idea who made what dish, except for Marwa, who set up the mystery boxes. And then it'll be time to taste. Manny, officially, I'm giving us three minutes each to finish everything. I have 15 seconds left. Looks like an ice cream. And with that, our dishes are complete. And they both look pretty damn good. Manny, I'm really proud of you for the look of the steak right now. Thank you. I'm really Appreciate proud of you. Time to bring the judges. So here we have our three judges. Right here on this side, we have a filet mignon with mashed potatoes and a red wine reduction. And over here, we have a king crab egg yolk raviolo with a piece of king crab leg right next to it. At this time, Manny and I are gonna walk out, let the judges discuss, and we'll come back to find out who's the winner. All right, what are we doing first? We're gonna go for this one, I think. We're gonna see if the egg yolk flows. Woo! It's a pretty decent flow. All right, time for the steak. Moment of truth. Super easy to cut through. Woo! That is looking good. Now we have to see if it tastes good. You gotta find the, the well-rounded bite here. That was really good. The yolk, that's just so creamy. The crab's like yeah. super fresh. Oh, it's like it. so tender. And the, the crust, it gets like a nice thick crust. You can tell from the side. It's like almost crispy. That's music in my ears. It right is there. really good. The way though, you'll notice the crust, they didn't sear the edges. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be tough. That's so well seasoned. Wow, it melts in your mouth. Yeah. Definitely the steaks, the stand up, mashed potatoes. Definitely like kind of like a heartier mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes don't do it for me. No, I don't really like them at all. This mashed potato is for like five people right now. The raviolis together, I feel like it was a much more coherent dish. But man, that like filet really stood out just on its own. Should we get final votes? Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. One, two, three. Anyone can cook. Anyone can. That doesn't mean that it's okay. Man. It's okay. Man. I was extremely proud of how Manny did today, and frankly, I actually thought I lost. Who voted for my dish? I thought this was anonymous. I did. Okay. You yeah. too. Benji, why did you like Manny's steak better? I'm actually curious because it looked fantastic. I got you. That steak was just unbelievable. Yeah. So it sounds like, in addition to this dish here being really a strong dish, the mashed potatoes put Manny under. As a punishment, Manny has to clean all the dishes, but Manny, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Nick. Tell us all below if you liked having Manny cooking today instead of filming. Manny was far better at cooking than I thought he would be, given that he never cooked, and he had me nervous at the end. One last time, make sure to subscribe so we can catch up to Gordon. Smack a like on the video, if not for me, for Manny's cooking today. And happy cooking.